My name is Hannah Carter. I'm an American who grew up internationally. I'm a librarian at an international school in Wuhan. I'm grown up drinking tea, and I've always liked tea. And since coming to China, I've learned more and more about tea. Tea is not just a beverage to me. Tea is life. And now I want to discover deeper depths of tea flavors. The unique climate and geographical features of the region make Ensher an important tea producing area in China, and spring is the busiest time for tea planters every year. It was my first time picking tea, and it was so much fun. The character for tea, for cha, uh, it has the three different parts. The, the top part is grass, uh, and the next part is ren, is people, and then the bottom part is shu, it's, it's um, trees. Um, and so it's kind of like people surrounded by nature, by trees and by, by grass, right? And that's really what tea picking is. We want them to be uh, the, the little straight one inside the curled up one. Yeah. Like this. Tea picking is a lot harder than I thought it would be. It's like a treasure hunt, looking for the perfect leaf and the bud furled together. I'm okay, but the local farmers are super fast. I have tea leaves, I have tea leaves, I have tea leaves, hey, hey. Here we are in a tea production place where they actually make tea the traditional way. And with me here is Yang Lao Shi, who is a tea expert. Yang Lao Shi. There are nine steps in the traditional tea making method that I learned. There are steps that require multiple people working together. And it's actually kind of a lot of fun. It feels like playing, but it's actually work. According to Mr. Yang, making tea is like playing Tai Chi. From a tree leaf to the perfect state of tea, you have to go through a lot of pain and hardship. It's the treasure of China. I could smell the tea around me and I was drinking the tea and it was beautiful and you could hear the birds. It was so nice. What makes it nicer is that the local people invited me to try different dishes made with tea leaves. <laughs> I've been invited to go outside and dance with them, and I'm so looking forward to doing it. The tea products here can be seen everywhere in China. Hundreds of years ago, the brick tea made in Chibi linked Asia and Europe. Many tea products were exported to England, Russia, and Germany via the tea road, which covers a distance of over 10,000 kilometers. This is our trade route. From this trade route, we can see the the integration of Chinese tea with the history and culture of other countries has sparked the evolution of different tea cultures in the world. 
Among them are the Mongolian milk tea and the British high tea. Speaking of the flavors of Chinese tea, since the Chinese have consumed tea for thousands of years, there's a breadth and a depth to their tea. I've drunk green tea, white tea, black tea, and dark tea, and they all taste differently. They all have a very natural and joyful taste. In the harvest season, surrounded by nature, farmers sing while they pick leaves. And you can tell that they're happy when they're off work as well. It has a taste of hospitality. When you come to a village like the Tujia village, there's a whole welcoming ceremony where they give you tea. It tastes like a culmination of the long history that it has taken for them to perfect this process. And they're still doing research to see how they can use science to make things even better. It's also a shared taste. Originating in China, tea has flourished all over the world. It's a great way to start conversations and exchange cultures. And all of these are wrapped up in one beautiful little cup.